earthquakes, military drills, or blown transformers. Whatever it is, the mystery booms we first reported last week on the Wake Franklin County line are still happening. It sounds like a firebomb. Neighbors say the loud booms happen late at night or early in the morning. They're powerful enough to shake homes and wake people up. Pretty loud sound. Um, it's more than you might get with, say, thunderstorm. It's not a gunshot because we hear gunshots here all the time. We hear rifles. People in and around the Barham Place subdivision along the Wake County, Franklin County line say it's been going on for about a month. It's a little bit frustrating for, for people in the neighborhood um, that are experiencing it. I tried to figure out what's behind it. I started with NCDOT and the 401 widening project. They say it's not them. Duke Energy tells me they're not responsible. I also called Seymour Johnson Air Force Base. They say this area isn't in their flight path. So I went to the National Weather Service. The only thing that really comes to mind would be a thunderstorm. And we have not had any thunderstorms here in the Raleigh area in um, probably a couple months now. Scott Sharp is a lead forecaster. He looked into it for us. It looks like these booms that people are hearing cannot really be explained by any kind of biological phenomenon. Neighbors say they've spoken with a geologist at NC State. No luck there either. Hundreds of people have reacted online to CBS 17's report over the past week. Several suggested Tannerite, but Johnson is skeptical. To make the noise, just from what I've read and from your articles, to make that kind of noise, truthfully, you would have to have at least five to ten pounds of this stuff to make that kind of noise. And then on top of that, it would leave a substantial void almost the size of half of this table, you know, where it went off. Gettysburg, Pennsylvania heard booms in January, but a nearby military base says it wasn't connected to their exercises. The same story in Columbus, Georgia, with Warner Robins Air Force Base and Fort Benning denying involvement. Bakersfield, California had a round of booms this time last year with Edwards Air Force Base saying it wasn't them. Seymour Johnson Air Force Base here says it's not their planes. Other local agencies tell CBS 17 they're unaware of any possible cause. Some describing it as frustrating, uh, frustrating. others calling it terrifying. Now they hadn't experienced a boom or blast in a while, but they say the one yesterday really stood out. And it felt like a car had ran into my house and it shook kind of like a small earthquake. It took your breath away. Robert Lakin says he was with his dog in the backyard of his Clayton home when he heard it. There was a huge concussion, uh, enough where you, you felt it in your chest. It happened around 4.30 Sunday afternoon. It was so loud, so powerful. Neighbors 25 miles away in Fuquay, Verena, say they felt it too. This was like kaboom. I mean, it hit again. Bob Stewart says he heard it before, but not for a couple of weeks. We have a lot of gunshots fired back in the, in the woods here. So we hear that all the time. But when, when the, the boom hits, you're just like... What in the world was that? They just kind of come out of nowhere, and it's usually been in the afternoons. Kay Gallagher says the blasts are responsible for this broken mirror in her cabinet. They also brought down light fixtures in her walk-in closet. All of the neighbors hear it. All of us have felt it, and but there's no answer. Today, a loud explosion was reported in Liberty. So far, though, the explosion remains a mystery. You could feel it like a shockwave. It was about 2.30 Friday. Knocked me out of bed. Calls to 911 reported what one caller described as sounding like a bomb going off. It felt close. It felt really close. This call came from the Vintage Village Estates mobile home park just off Belmont Avenue. It was pretty loud. He wasn't the only one in the neighborhood that heard it. I was sitting in my vehicle with the windows up and I heard it. Um, and it, I couldn't tell where it was coming from, but it was really loud. And just about a mile down the road, fire crews at the Liberty Fire Station also reported a loud boom and felt it too. It actually shook the station. My partner went out and looked up and down Belmont because we thought it was maybe a semi that had blown a tire and we didn't see anything. One caller thought the loud explosion may have came from a nearby gas well, but crews checked it out and said everything appeared normal.
In the Netherlands, a terrible scene is playing out on the coast. An estimated 20,000 seabirds have died en masse, with hundreds washing up each day. The birds usually spend their entire lives at sea, and scientists are now using the remains to try to determine the causes, but no conclusions have yet been reached. Bad weather has been cited as a possible factor, and it's unclear whether a recent container spill that littered the coast with debris may also be linked. Dutch scientists have begun a mass autopsy after the sudden death of an estimated 20,000 guillemots off the Dutch coast, hundreds of which washed up on the country's beaches. The reason they died, I think, is starvation. But the reason for the starvation, we don't know yet. That's why we do this research, to see why are all these birds so emaciated, empty stomachs, tiny livers, no fat, no muscles, and we need to know why did this happen. High winds and stormy conditions could also have affected the birds' feeding patterns, but marine pollution is another possible culprit. One explanation is that there was a cargo ship that lost a lot of cargo and maybe something poisonous is in there. We don't know. We have to look inside the birds if there's anything in there that poisoned them or that they swallowed and sort of yeah, made their stomach no longer work. It always worries you when there are so many dead birds within a couple of weeks. But on the other hand, there are 1.3 million of these birds. So if 5% of them die, you have a lot of dead birds. Look at this mess. A disturbing sight by anyone's standards. Look at all the feathers. Dozens of birds, mostly ducks, found dead at Elliston Park in southeast Calgary. Wayne Clark and his partner Heather Higgs made the grim discovery last week and say each time they've returned, there have been more dead birds. We couldn't believe it, a dozen. And now, after another week, there's 50 birds. It's, got all, it's unbelievable. I've been here hiking around this lake for maybe 17 years and I've never seen it like this. Nothing. A large sinkhole has opened in Fayette County. It is in the Sunoco gas station parking lot near Route 51 off Interstate 70 Interchange in Belle Vernon. It is at least 10 feet wide. This road here is Route 51. It's about a half mile off the I-70 Interchange in Ross Traver Township. Just steps away if you walk with me. Check it out. This deep and dangerous sinkhole that's swallowing the corner of this Sunoco gas station. And it's just a few cones, a couple of barriers, and some downed caution tape that blocks off this dangerous area. One person who frequents the Sunoco and another who works next door tell us this started as a small hole. Slowly, it's become larger and deeper, but recently getting much worse, much quicker. Now it's more dangerous by the day. At a guess, the sinkhole looks to be around 15 feet long, roughly 10 feet wide and very deep. As you can see here, not much is blocking the area from drivers who park their vehicles just steps from the edge. A large sinkhole has appeared out of nowhere under a car park at a Baldiva shopping centre overnight. The slowly caving concrete catching the eye of hundreds of shoppers. At around 15 metres wide and 2 metres deep, this sinkhole is hard to miss. Basically the road's just dropped. It's quite impressive but also like gobsmacking I suppose. Customers turning up for their weekend shopping at Stockland Baldivis this morning, shocked to find a huge section of car park sinking. Close to the public, security spent the day guarding the area, shoppers watching on as the ground continued to collapse. The sinkhole lies frighteningly close to the Stockland entrance here. If it had been just 50 metres closer, it's possible it could have brought part of the building down with it. Now we know about sinkholes in Florida. What's going on here? As we show you this video that we have with News Drone 2, another sinkhole here, dangerously close to a busy road. This is the view from News Drone 2, showing you the sheer size of this sinkhole sitting right off Lawrenceville Highway in Tucker. It has grown a lot. James Fisher owns the property directly behind this property and has watched the hole get bigger and bigger. It started as a little bitty hole that you 
you could look down, it was very deep. Now he's worried about how close it's getting to the busy state highway. That's going to be disastrous. I would think two MARTA buses would go in there right now.